Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Nice, nice. Um, so, congratulations, Andre, for your address, for your election. We are happy. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are happy to have. We are happy to have you here with us in our mini debconf. This is the first time in Belo Horizonte, Belo Horizonte city, and this is the fifth edition. So, it was it was good because we are waiting to invite the new. DPL, and you have the opportunity to hear you for the first time, I believe. It's your first talk, right? right? Yes, it's my first talk, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ten days after being elected, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, we can start. So, feel free for your talk, and uh, if you need something, you can, you can call me. I will be here listening to you. Yeah. Hello, everybody. As you can see, it's dark in Germany. Maybe you can hear the, the, the castle in my back. Maybe or not. It's, um, I'm really happy to be here. And I, I need to admit, uh, when I've got the mail, I somehow assumed you wanted to have me physically in Belo Horizonte, which I would have liked. But <laughs> well, uh, traveling the distance for just one talk is a little bit much. and. Yeah, finally, I see some positive outcome in the pandemic because uh, this has shown us that a lot more is possible without traveling a lot. Yeah, so I will share my screen for a small presentation which I prepared. I called it Spitz from a Greenhorn DPL because I not really feel new or fresh or young. Just um, want to simply introduce myself a bit to, uh, to tell you where, where I am. New DPL is uh, DD since 1998. So when I started with Debian, it was something else than now. I joined 16 DEPCONFs. Um, last one in India is not on this row of t-shirts. I had all my t-shirts online in, uh, in the Corona pandemic. And I was also two times in Brazil, one times for FISL in 2013 in Porto Alegre and at DEPCONF 19, which was a really great DEPCONF. I have the t-shirt here. No, don't know if you can see both my presentation and me, whatever. I have uploaded more than 17,000 packages and I fixed more than 5,800 bucks in all this time since 1998. I think fixing bucks is more important than, than, than uploading a new version of a package bit because I've more or less done it semi-automated so it's not much brain you put into every single upload but fixing a bug is always responding to the needs of a user, which, which is more important, in my opinion. And I think I'm most proud about the fact that I attracted at least 25 new developers. I will come back to this later because um, doing some technical work is one thing, but enabling others to do the technical work is even more important. And I heard you are uh, 2,000, there are 240 people in Belo Horizonte for this mini DEPCONF. This is a really cool job. And I really applaud this. And because you, you get new people involved, which is really important, I think. So far for my work in Debian, but what about life? I was born in 1967. I'm married since 1989. I'm a father of a son since 1919. I finished my physics study in, in 1994. And I'm a grandfather um, and also an ad adopted daughter since 2015. Grandfather, well, it's thanks to my son. And the adopted daughter is actually thanks to Debian. I had a 
talk in uh, DebConf in Montreal about this story, which is really nice. And I really enhanced my family due to Debian. I became again grandfather in 2018. So I have two German grandson, grandsons and I have also an adopted granddaughter, which is actually living downstairs here. And sometimes I bring her to the kindergarten, which is really nice. And I have also another adopted daughter from Vietnam since 2020. And I do not want to forget that the huge thank goes to, to my wife for all the freedom she gives me to have talks in the late evening in Germany and like this and all this stuff I'm doing. So she is really tolerant and a lot of thanks goes to her. What else am I doing besides packaging and the family? Yeah, I wrote it. I think I gave even a link in the recent interview I gave to, uh, I'm planting trees like crazy here around in my garden is, um, there are several trees which are creating baby trees. And since in the last couple of years, a lot of wood has died. I decided, well, I pull out the baby trees and plant them in the wood to make them growing up there. I'm working with the parents for future, which is a small group of people here in my town to supporting the Fridays for Future kids. I love bicycling here in the nature. I'm doing other sports like swimming and running. I enjoy taking photos. And I also doing some street mapping, which is more or less helping me uh, when I'm, I'm going by bicycle through the area here. Yeah, you might ask yourself about my motivation to run for DP DPL. Well, one, one thing was uh, that I realized um, Jonathan uh, was the only candidate, candidate last year. And in Kochi, he said he will not run again. So, well, I was a little bit afraid we have no candidate at all. And I also have seen some problems unaddressed for years. Uh, for instance, there are a couple of them, the most important ones for me were that I think we should move all our package maintenance on salsa. And I'm really care about inviting packaging teams. We have a lot of great teams inside Debian, but we also have um, pseudo teams which are more or less one or two people and we have single maintainers who are not really friendly or inviting to others and I would love if I move Debian a little bit more in the direction that we have inviting teams um, including newcomers, teaching newcomers and working together with them. I also think that um, we have some very important core teams who carry a lot of workloads and are not really redundantly uh, settled. So a very small number of people is doing an amazing amount of work, but in the end, this could be a problem to, yeah, if these people might just let them get some children uh, in the best case and shift their priorities. And so this, uh, we, we need more redundancy in these core teams, in my opinion. Yeah, and I also had some private reasons to run for GPL. Yeah, to give just some example, what I mean with uh, core three teams problem, you all know uh, we have FTP master team and they have the Im really important task to make sure that only free software is entering Debian. And this is uh, the base of our work, right? But 
maybe we can relax the rules a little bit that um, if this uh, it's clarified that the software has a free license and if there is some missing single copyright statement some authors are missing in, in there this is sh should be considered a bug it should be fixed but it should not stop uh, packages enter entering debian in my opinion and it would be also nice to to provide some tools to remove packages right you if you think a package should be removed from debian for instance or for some architectures um, I realized in the recent time T 64 bit um, transition that it would be way more handy if uh, a maintainer could simply uh, trigger this removal automatically and we would not need to wait for FTP master. Yeah, and maybe there are other things I, I would like to discuss with all those um, teams about means they, they consider nice or they would like to enhance in their work. Um, there's also there's a change process in Debian which I really like to uh, smoothen in a way like uh, Michael Stapelberg has uh, written five years ago in his uh, more or less famous blog post, which was called Winding Down Debian Involvement, where he said, well, um, I had some imagination how Debian should work. And I could not see any change in a couple of years. And so he was a little bit frustrated. But yeah, frustration is one thing. And um, I personally hope to move a little bit into the right direction. He was uh, um, suggesting and he was criticizing things like uh, the cost of each change is distributed onto the package maintainers, which is, yeah, if, if you could imagine that, for instance, in this time T 64 bit tra transition, a lot of things could be automated because all the packages are uh, maintained in the very same way on Salsa. Then it could be went way more smooth than writing single bug reports to the maintainer. I hope the maintainer is is uh, moving the changes into the repository which is used or no, not at all used and is not forgotten in the next upload if there is no repository at all and all this stuff. So um, having a common way where all the packages are maintained would be really nice. So we are simply lacking some tooling for large changes like these and I I'm not as naive to assume that all these problems will be solved in the end of my term right but um, yeah I, I want to prepare something into this direction to move Debian a little bit more forward into the future we also have to face uh, some holdouts who refuse re refuse to collaborate into Debian. They are very sure that only they can deal with their packages as it's necessary to deal. So, and the funny thing, the um, excess except uh, thing one month ago where some foreigner forced himself into the um, git repository which created um, a big security hole is is used as an argument to not collaborate with others but in my opinion i i use it as a counter argument 
because if we have two or three people for one task, nobody can force himself in, into the position and he, newcomers need to grow up and need to gain for trust. And so I think it's better to have more than one person for a job than only one person who claims that only this person is possible to solve our problems. Yeah, something I did kind of uh, training in, in advance for the DPL job was um, my pet project Debian Med. People addressed me frequently as a leader of Debian Med, which I always refuse because no, I, I, I'm not leading this project. I'm initiated this project and I made very sure that we are a welcoming team. Everybody can uh, can work very, very freely, self-confident and um, also competent because how can I how can I lead such a team if I'm not an um, expert in the topic itself? I'm a physicist, as I said. I am nothing to do with bioinformatics or medicine. So um, my way to deal with the tasks I have to do was uh, to be very attractive for newcomers, for experts in this field. And we finally managed that um, the, every year a newcomer confirmed, well, I'm only a Debian developer because this Debian made project existed. So we have a very open co collaboration mindset. That means team uploads are very welcome. Everybody can t touch every package. And well, if something is not working as expected, we fix it later, right? We are working very closely together with Upstream and we have packages in, in, inside uh, Debian and the Debian Me team that would not be possible without uh, upstream contribution right to the packaging. And what many people are frequently wondering, um, yes, Debian Meet represents uh, a nice, nice project for Debian in principle, but the way more important thing is that it's a uh, potential model to, for outreach on a broader scale. So if other teams inside Debian would behave to newcomers and, and involve upstreams that way as we are doing and would reach out uh, to the outer world, the whole free software world and not only Debian and fiddle around with their own package, um, in my opinion, we could gain even more traction in a lot of more fields than just a couple of blends we have currently in Debian, which are more or less designed in the same way as a Debian made project. So don't don't be disturbed that it's all this medicine or biology stuff. Just look how we are doing and do it the same way. Yeah, some, some more training in advance was in the Debian Python team, which is, um, well, to, to say the, the contrast to the Debian Me team is totally wrong. It's, it's different in, in, in several aspects. It's uh, Debian Me is about a certain topic. Debian Python is about a certain language, which has um, some, some difference in principle. One major point in the team policy of the Debian Python team was that um, they had a de facto, de facto option for no teamwork inside this team. We, they used the same repository, but uh, there was an option to say, well, this is my package and you are not permitted to change it which is, in my opinion, absolutely contrary to what we call teamwork. And when I realized this, I proposed a change. 
and I received a lot of positive responses, responses of a lot of team members and which I really sad about and I'm sorry that this happened. It's also scared away two long, long term contributors to this team who really insisted on their very own packages. And if we get rid of this option, to their opinion, the team is something else than before. Right? Okay, we are volunteers and we, we are not able to force somebody to agree. And now the team is um, picking up some remaining pieces from from one person who left the team. The other the other uh, maintainer has drawn all his repositories out of the team space. It happens. But uh, as I said, I'm not lucky about this. But I think it was a good training for being DPL because we have always the situation that in the case of change, some people agree and others disagree. And so we need to find a consensus and hopefully a consensus the majority can agree with. Yeah, in, in my uh, TPL platform, I also wrote about diversity, um, diversity regarding geographical uh, discrimination in open source and I'm, I'm so happy that I, uh, when I hear the number of um, contributors in Brazil and uh, people uh, um, attending the conference. So Brazil is definitely not discriminated uh, in, in the geographic aspect, but we have um, nearly no developers in Africa and other regions in the world where we ha don't have any David developer. And I, I hope I can do a little bit against this. And we have also a, quite a bad gender balance in uh, open source and specifically also in, in Debian. And well, we, it, it is a volunteer project. We can't force volunteers of whatever gender in inside uh, Debian but I think we can do a little bit more uh, to be more inviting. And I also discussed the problem that, uh, for instance, um, for cultural reasons, um, women are, can't spend larger time chunks to, to this task uh, on a voluntary basis. And so I, had the first idea that we could probably do some tiny tasks in quality assurance where you can get some yeah some people involved who who can't go do big contributions but maybe for such tiny contributions learning a bit and so on and so on, i had uh, one idea to define kind of a bug of the day of the day, which I imagine something like, well, I'm doing UDD query for bugs that are open for a long, long time. The package is not yet maintained on Salsa, which would give us the option to move it to Salsa. And um, it has some features like uh, not uh, short depth helper also something like this so this um, just packages that are more or less obviously not very active maintained and so we can do some training on this bug and and show people how to, what what uh, can be done for the packages this is hopefully good for for newcomers and hopefully also for the quality assurance inside Debian. And similar, similarly, I want to write some auto package tests of the day. So um, I'm I'm positively convinced that it would be the best situation if every single package 
package would have an auto package test. But uh, this is a far, far distant future. So let's start with packages um, that have a high popcorn number and um, look at uh, packages uh, with the highest popcorn that don't have an auto package test and just write tiny tests, which in several cases can be done uh, easily for some packages, others is hard. So let's spot the easy task, harvest the low-hanging low fruit together with newcomers and maybe we can attract people who otherwise would never have been come to Debian and maybe some of them will stay in Debian. This, this is, these are some very first ideas I have. So now, do you have questions? I'm just here, I, I just told the organizers, um, I have not a big presentation. My, uh, my slides are online, are not yet online, but I will move them to this talks page. You can, you can uh, um, seek for Andreas Tille talks and you will find uh, some links and in the next one or two days, uh, this talk will be there. So this is a view you can see behind me if, if it would be not so dark. So this, this is what I wanted to present. And now I'm keen on your questions. Please ask questions. I'm, I'm really keen to, to hear what you're interested in. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. It was very nice to know about your first ideas to your term. Um, well, I can, I can make a, one question now is what do you think it will be your biggest challenger during your term? Do you think it's more related to technical stuff or more social relation with <laughs> Debian developers and people? <laughs> this is a good question. I really, really hope it will be technical, technically, but I'm afraid the social problems will be outright this by far. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, I'm going to ask in Portuguese if someone have someone have questions, ok? Uh, alguém tem alguma questão que gostaria de fazer? Só vim aqui o microfone e como eu falei, o Canastro pode traduzir também. Charles? We have one question. Just a little bit. Ah. Passa no microfone. Use os dois, o microfone e esse aqui, para ele poder ouvir. So, hi Andreas, thanks for, for hi. joining. Uh, it was very nice to, to meet you at DebConf last year. Uh, yeah. My, my first question is not exactly, yeah, it's a bit of a question, but uh, do you have a, a proposal right now for the, the team maintenance and how to solve it? And the, the second part is a bit of what we do as curl maintainers. Uh, I'm helping Sergio, Sergio and Samuel to do it. And we decided to move the, the package uh, to the Debian namespace in Salsa while still uh, using the maintainer field in Debian control as the curl maintainers. So we can have all the good things in tracker and everything else. Uh, but it's also under the Debian namespace, so it solves a bit. If people need to make an upload or something, uh, we just ask them to politely send an email before uploading things, but that's it. Yeah. Well, regarding the team maintenance, um, it, it was an interesting discussion on Debian vote and also Debian private and so that people absolutely disagreed with me. Uh, about, um, well, I, I didn't even make the explicit proposal to mandatory team maintenance, even if I have very positive feelings about this, I think it's too early to have mandatory team maintenance. But what I think it's not too early to have Salsa mandatory, which is an absolute precondition for team maintenance. This is the so 
because you are, the first question was about technical problems or social problems, I think moving everything to salsa is more or less a technical question. And the team maintenance is probably the, the hardest thing is the social questions, right? And so, um, yeah, this is not for my term, uh, team maintenance, but salsa, uh, I, I, I love to, I love to salvage packages to salsa, for instance, in this uh, back of the day thingy that everything ends up in, in, in on salsa and maybe we create some repository there where we dump this if there is no proper team found or so, something that is like this. To the, the other question, um, in my opinion, the Debian na namespace is um, uh, a solution for, oh, we really do not have a, a better team place than this one, right? Dump, every, dump everything in Debian is um, uh, not really, it's a very flat structure, but it's not really a team structure because people do not really um, identify themselves with the team they are belonging to. So my recommendation would be trying to find some teams, which is not always easy because, for instance, um, as I said, with the Debian Med team and uh, Debian Python team, uh, any uh, Debian Med Python package fits into two teams. It fits, uh, one is context-wise because it's medicine, biology, and one is language-wise. So um, it's not always easy to decide. But yeah, being a little bit flexible in this uh, makes sense and, and dumping everything in Debian is nothing I would really like if there are better, better options. Is this answer, answering your question? Yes. A I mean, a bit. It's more like an open question, right? And it's an open yeah, answer yeah. too, but we are going to try to, to make it. Yeah. So my second question is about MinDebConf. Uh, as you showed the, the map in there, uh, we saw that there is a, a lot of differences on geolocation from Debian developers. We know that we have more Debian developers in the rich north and, and all that. Uh, we also do have those differences here in Brazil. So s the south and southeast are, are more rich and so we have more Debian developers here. Uh, then then northeast or north northwest of the country. So we are entertaining the, the possibility of having two mini debconfs next year. So we would like just to check with you if that would be okay for Debian. I love every mini debconf. Every I love always if people meet each other. If it's called debconf or what whatever the name might be, um, just make sure you will meet in person, right? You can call so call it sprint or something if it's only 20 people yeah just do it cool thanks first of all thanks andres for presenting here in our mini dev conf uh, you mentioned during your talk about the uh, uh, the work that you you have been doing with Debian Med, uh, also about diversity. This is those are topics that we have been discussing here during during the, the, the mini DevConf, and I think many people here are interested on that. Uh, could you elaborate a bit more about the practice that you are using in the Debian Med team that you think that will be beneficial for the broader community, like some some things that we could do uh, in our local communities that would. Uh, help us to bring new blood to the project? Yeah, well, um, I I think every DebConf I, I joined, I had a, a talk which uh, which usually was called uh, Debian Made, which scared away uh, many people. So I should not never have used the title in the, the, the talk description and talk about team maintenance and so, which, uh, um, yeah. Maybe you go to my uh, talks page and see what I did there. I do not want to, to cut your question, but there is, I 
talked about this more than than I can answer in this question. One probably successful thing which we are all, uh, all doing is outreachy and Google Summer of Code. Um, these are nice projects uh, which uh, are good for for your team in any case, even if the student will not remain. And um, I need to admit the majority of students did not really remain, but recently, uh, now when I uh, that was elected as DPL, I've got to respond, ah, uh, thanks for mentoring me a couple of years ago and maybe I will do some more. So you should not expect that the people um, stay immediately, but something will remain in these people you are teaching in this period something uh, some work is done for you which is good and something will remain so please um, make sure you to f draft good uh, tasks for students which is one part and join this project and another thing which is probably unique in the Debian made project was the so-called uh, mentoring of the month where I invited uh, a newcomer to find a package this uh, person wanted to see in Debian and I want I provided all help uh, to to get this work done so we have also our own students project something like this and this was um, this was kind of interesting because we finally in in these months something happened in most cases we we had a finished uh, package also here most of those students students did not remain but some remained so you have kind of an investment which is and there's no guarantee that this time investment will be rewarded in the end but if you don't try you will never know right you need to try and um Regarding diversity, uh, I once had one project because I had the restriction the package must be out of the topic of Debian Mid uh, project and I learned we have always men. And then I dropped this restriction. I said I want a, a non-male person joining the project and uh, there's no matter what topic of this package and I actually had one woman from Iran, which was kind of the least uh, country where I expected to to have a woman joining it. This was a inter very interesting project for me. She also did not uh, uh, continue in Debian, but it was a pretty interesting project. Uh, interesting stuff was done. And yeah, just try. You, you need to you need to find ideas how you can attract people with such things and I hope this um, bug of the day or, um, or the package test of the day or something like this will bring also more people. Let's see. I don't know. I've got no idea. Let's try it. Once I'm back from vacation, end of May, I want to, I want to, to start this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Hi Andres, nice to meet you. My Hi. Is Andre. I'm kind of um, new commit to Debian projects. I have um, around a year of uh, participation and these things. My question is more um, uh, for newcomers like me. And my question is, what advice would you give to um, someone that's starting out on the community? Um, some around these things. Then so what would you say to um, one that's starting now? Yeah, you, maybe the best advice is uh, find a task you are happy about. You find a task you like inside Debian. If you are someone who wants to do not a big packaging or so, but want to work in the publicity team or so. 
you are I, I don't know you but you do in Debian there are a lot of interesting tasks and um, there is no task which is less important than the other task um, it's the main point in my opinion is uh, it must make the system better for you personally I started in Debian because I think I wrote it, it was kind of an accident that I'm Debian developer at all because I needed a package which was a monolingual uh, dictionary which was would have been in danger of being removed and so I said well this is my task now to make sure it doesn't get removed and then you see ah there is something else I really need this and then I do this so make sure your own motivation is kept as high as possible and then you will stay and you will find a lot of interesting tasks. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Andreas, one question. Um, what I know there are a lot of Debian developers in, in Germany. Germany. Well, you are, you are German. What do you think about yeah. this? If you have one, any idea about how, why you have so many uh, German Debian developers and uh, what can you do to have more, what do you think we can do to have more Brazilians uh, as yeah. Debian developers too? So you think I'm an expert about the Germans? <laughs> what should I say? I, I don't own a car, I don't drink beer, I don't like football. What should I say? <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, I asked myself uh, several times why we have uh, more or less the highest uh, density of developers compared to the number of inhabitants and the highest absolute number. Uh, I, I think if, if I look at your mini DebConf, you Brazilians are doing an amazing job. So I have no nothing to say what you can do better right. so thanks for what you did so that's all I can say great thanks um, more questions okay let me go there and I, I love that I've seen the people I know from from other DebCons here in the audience and, and asking questions um, hi um, are you listening to me okay so I have more as like a personal question. I mean, I just want to know like, uh, since you started uh, as a Debian developer and now as a leader, what has been, have been your difficulties along the way? I mean, the main challenges and if, if there was anything that stopped you, prevented you from continuing and uh, how did you overcome those difficulties along the way? Yeah, well, thinking about difficulties, I'm, yeah. I haven't seen some some difficulties which stopped me from the, the, the only thing is uh, I have seen always a lot of tasks that need to be done and I'm not able to do them all myself. This is basically the, you, you, if you if I in in the morning I uh, get up and think uh, I could do this and that and that and and all is important which one should I pick and maybe it's a good advi advice to to um, usually pick the low uh, the low hanging fruits because it is highly motivating because you get something done but you also need to harvest the uh, fruits that are on top of the tree and you can't reach so easily but it was I was never demotivated except that I would have wished uh, more time to to spend on Debian so thank you you're welcome hi uh, just a follow-up question Just a follow-up question to this one. What keeps you motivated after 15, more, almost 20 years doing that? Why do you keep contributing to free software and Debian? 
Yeah, it's, it's in principle, well, uh, what I usually say, people uh, who are not involved in free software think, uh, are thinking um, my motivation is to make the world a better place, right? But this is this is actually not true. I, I want to make sure I have a rock solid operating system for my own computer. And this is my way to do this is to the, the method of free software because I know there are a lot of very skilled and gifted people working on this together with me. And the fact that I'm possibly making the world a better place is, is really great, but this is not the main motivation, right? So otherwise I could What I said from the beginning also. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I said I, my main motivation is to have a better operating system for myself. Um, and I, I consider the method to do free software the best way to, to get this because there are a lot of in, uh, skilled people are working on the same goal. And the fact that I'm that the world becomes a better place when doing so, it's, it's, it's just nice, right? It's, it's, it's great, but it's not the main motivation. Uh, uh, my name is John. Uh, I've been with Debian since last year, so I'm a new contributor. And you guys talked about how there are uh, a bigger number of PDs and contributors in general in North America and from Europe. So my question is, how, uh, what is the cost, if you know, if what you think about that, and what we as a Oh, and what we, what we as a community, sorry, what we as a community can do to grow bigger communities and to reach new ones. Yeah, run more mini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just wrote down just one more mini dev conf. You are doing exactly the right thing. I, I do not. Uh, I have no better ideas than you are just doing right now. And in people in Brazil are uh, you ha are a great community. You are way better than 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 other countries. Running the fifth de uh, dev, uh, mini dev conf. Meanwhile, this is so great. So what sh what should I add? Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Um, we have no more questions now. Um, so, Andreas, would like to your final words for our talk, for your talk? Yeah. 
I enjoyed uh, speaking, this, having the first speech at your DevConf and the questions were interesting for me and I hope uh, my answers were also interesting for you and I love to see you all in Busan. Yeah, in, so. in July. Yeah, and we are we are talking yeah. about that. I, I think it, I believe we have some Brazilians there. And yeah, cool. Talk of you in person. I hope you will not have any major trouble with uh, Visa and so on. And yeah. huh? if if I could do something, I would uh, um, drastically um, simplify Visa uh, stuff to make more people uh, or enable more people to come. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope to see yeah. you soon. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Have fun. Yeah, see you. Bye bye. Bye. Let me turn off the things here. <laughs>